Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house. It's good to have each and every one of you with us this morning. Thank God for such a beautiful, blessed day. You might say, well, preacher, it's raining outside. Thank God for the rain, amen. Uh, what do they used to say? April showers bring May flowers. Amen. amen. Well, we thank God for all that God does for us and uh, he's doing with us. Matter of fact, that's why we trust him and rely upon him because what he offers is far greater and better than anything this world has to offer. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Psalms 102 says, Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. Oh, how we want God to answer us speedily. Amen. We want God's uh, answer uh, as fast as we can get it. And by the way, he does. But God, God got to remember. Got to remember. You know, there's a lot of things God can keep us from. But he don't because he's trying to grow us and develop us. Amen. You see, it's when you go through the flames. When you go through that, on the other side, you're better for it. Amen. And so that's why sometimes God allows us to go through certain things. As a parent, I know uh, I've warned my children, warned my children, but sometimes you have to let them experience certain things in order for them to learn the real lesson. Amen. Uh, because uh, unfortunately, we're just kind of, we're, we're preachers that way. It's just the way we are. But anyways, thank God for the opportunity we have. It's glad to have each and every one of you with us this morning. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. And uh, then, Brother John, you come. Lord, as we bow before you, as we come to the throne, thank you for the privilege and the honor that we have to be in thy house, to be with thy people. Uh, Lord, uplift and encourage. Lord, God, direct. Uh, Lord, we do ask that you will touch uh, these different ones that's on our prayer list. I pray, Lord, you'll be with each and every one. A special request for Miss Modena. I pray, Lord, you'll help her. Uh, Miss Linda Scott, continue to bless her. I'm glad that she's home now with the family. And I pray, Lord, you'll continue to bless and, and help and heal her. And then, of course, uh, Michael Hall's brother, as we have uh, was mentioning the other day on the prayer list, uh, I pray, Lord, that you'll just touch him and heal him and uh, be with that and be with that family. But also, Lord, there's a lot of families today, unfortunately, that are separated, that are that are hurting, that, uh, uh, Lord, the, the sickness, uh, there, and there's a lot of sickness out there. And I pray, Lord, that you'll touch each and every one, but Lord, help us to seek your face through all these things. And on the other side, we'll be a brighter light and more stronger for you. Lead God and direct as we go forward in Christ's name. Amen. Brother John. Amen. And you know, as our days go by, as the COVID is still with us and we're still missing our church family, I do want you to think about this. Everything is not doom and gloom. Amen. 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 Because if you really think about this, God has showed his presence. Oh, amen. And when I say show his presence, I mean how many people have got to sit with their children on a daily basis and walk with right. them? Right, amen, them. amen. God does everything for purpose. Yes, sir, amen. How many of you know your neighbors now that you did not know before? That well, you've amen. actually walked across the yard and took time to actually talk to them? So God is doing wonderful things with this. So everything is not doing No, well. sir. Amen. It's all for a purpose. Amen. Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross. <laughs> Yeah. 
really celebrate and rejoice over is knowing the fact that we serve a risen Savior. Amen. Amen. I tell you, as we uh, continue to serve and honor the Lord, and that's what we're here to do, we're here to serve and honor Him. We thank God for every opportunity that we have. Amen. And in that, we just rejoice over that. We do need to continue to keep praying for these different ones and pray one for another. Because, unfortunately, uh, the isolation and everything, it has affected even in that much the more. And uh, it makes it rather difficult. For instance, I'll give you an example. Uh, we know different ones that are in the hospitals. And uh, those that are in the hospitals are, are shut off from their family. I've got a cousin right now that his wife is in very critical condition in ICU. And uh, unfortunately, he's being shut off from her. And uh, it may be... Uh, that uh, she may not survive, and she uh, it may be her last days. And if that's the case, I'm here to tell you it's not a good, it's not a good thing. It's really not, because if it is, he's having to be away from her for her last uh, moments in time. And uh, I tell you, it's rough. It's hard. And so we need to pray for these different ones and, and uh, lift, uh, lift up in prayer, uh, because uh, they're, they're going through a hard, difficult time. And then you got others with sickness and, and such, and uh, so pray. And really, really spend time in prayer with God. Amen. And like Brother John said, uh, there, there are a lot of good things about this. And the good part is, is that families have been uh, uh, back together, if you will, in the house and, and, uh, and learning each other, uh, seeing each other, spending more time with each other. Uh, you know, uh, Daddy didn't go home cutting on the ball game because the ball game wasn't on, amen. And, and so in that, uh, it's, a lot, it's allotted and allowed a lot of uh, uh, interaction amongst the family. And that's a good thing. And then it really is, and we thank God for that. Now, Mark chapter number four, in verse number 50, uh, 35, if you will, I preached out of this passage of scripture before. As a matter of fact, uh, it's probably a familiar passage of scripture to many of us, but this is a, a, little different, a little different message to you this morning. In Mark chapter number four, uh, chapter number four, verse number 35, uh, the Bible says, in the same day, when the eve was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over under the other side. When they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. There were also with him also uh, uh, or other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they waked him uh, and saying unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and, the sea, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Let me read that again. Why are ye so fearful? How is it, or why is it, that ye have no faith? How is it that ye have no faith? Where is our faith at today? Amen. Read on. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? I tell you what manner of man that is. It's God in the flesh. And thank God for that. We're not serving just something fictional out there. We're not uh, talking about something other that's just man-made. Amen. We're talking about God in the flesh. God himself. Jesus Christ, who has given us the life that we have. Amen. And thank God for that. Let's go Lord in prayer. I pray, Lord, you'll help us throughout this service today. I pray that you'll be in the message. I pray, Lord, that you'll speak to each and every heart, whether here or there, at home, listening. I pray, Lord, you'll touch each and every one. The Lord, I pray, heal our land as we've asked you. And I pray, Lord, that we'll see from this day forth, we'll see thy hand in all these matters much more clear and much more prevalent. Help us, dear Lord, in Christ's name. Amen. Go back with me, if you will. You see, the fact of the matter is, Getting in the boat is a crucial thing. Getting in the boat. Let me remind you of something the Bible talked about in these days in which we're living in. In Matthew chapter 24, verse number 37, the Bible says this. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now what is he talking about? He's talking about the time when Noah built a boat. Amen. I want you to get your mind with me about where we're at and in the signs of the times in which we're living in. Noah built a boat. He says, as it was in the days. But as it was in the days of Noah, were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as it was in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. 
and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. God says, look, as it was in the days of Noah. Now what did Noah have? He had a boat. He had a boat. God told him to build a boat because the boat would protect him. The boat would provide for him. The boat would give him and his family a way to escape. Amen. Now, some of you might be scratching and say, well, does that mean, preacher, that we're to go out and build ourselves a, a boat? No, that's not what I mean. It's not what God's talking about. God gave him a command in order for Noah to survive, he had to listen to the word of God. Amen. He had to listen to the word of God. In order for him to survive, he had to listen to God's word. Now remember that. Why is that so important? Go with me to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 18. For Christ also has once suffered for us, uh, for, for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Now, what he's talking about, he's talking about what Jesus did, why Jesus did what he did, and in the power that he did it in, through God himself, the Holy Spirit of God. Now, look what he says. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days and all, while the ark was a preparing. Now, here we see that word again, long suffering. Where do we see that? Second Peter chapter three, verse number ten, or excuse me, verse number nine. The Bible says that the Lord is long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Thank God for his long sufferingness. Now, why is he long suffering? He's given us an opportunity. You can see what's going on. You can evaluate the circumstance and the situation. Even the carnal mind, uh, mind man today is acknowledging of biblical times that we're living in. Look and see. Look and see. Open your eyes. Behold in what time we're living in. The Bible says he's long-suffering. Thank God for that. The Lord is long-suffering. He says, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, were in few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Now, a lot of people take that out of context. I want to ask you a very legitimate question. Did Noah get saved in the water, or did he get saved from the water? I'm waiting on everybody's response. If Noah would have been in the water, he would have died like everybody else. So he didn't get saved in the water, he got saved from the water. See, when people see that, Brother John, they take that twist at him. Let's read on. Let's read on. The light figure, wherein to even baptism, doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Now, good conscience. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. A good conscience. He's talking about the mind here. Amen. What does that mean? We're going to talk about that. Read on with me. A good conscience, he says. He says, toward God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers be made subject unto him. Now, a good conscience, let this mind be in you. It's why it's called the, uh, the knowledge of, uh, uh, of the saving grace. See, the fact of the matter is, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. A good conscience, he says. Amen. As in other words, you've accepted in your mind and in your heart what God has done for you. Amen. You're well aware that he died for your sin. And without his sacrifice, you'd split hell wide open. A good conscience, he says. Read on. You see, the fact of the matter is, this word baptism is taken from a Greek word called baptismo, that it means to be placed within. I'm going to baptize my hand real quick, and there's no water involved. Y'all watching? Y'all watching? Here we go. I'm going to baptize. You know what I did? I placed my hand within my jacket. Amen. I placed my hand within my jacket. That's baptism. Amen. A lot of people, when they see baptism, they automatically they go straight to water. Do you realize that the Bible talks about that Jesus baptizes with fire? Amen. You see, there's a real reason for that. Because of what the word actually means. You see, read on with me. Let me give it to you like this. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 4. Ye are of God, little children, 
and, over, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, what happened the day I got saved? The Holy Spirit of God came within my heart and indwelled me. Amen. So greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I have all power. That's me right here, Bishop. That's me doing that right there. Amen. So I already have all power because God's power lives within me. And does that mean I can go out and do anything and everything? No, no, no. I'm still bound by the Word of God. Amen. I still have to adhere to the Word of God. Now, with that in mind, go with me to 1 John chapter 5, verse number, five, uh, verse number 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he, which he hath testified of his Son. Now, what do we receive? We receive God's witness, where he's testified of his Son. Look with me, verse number 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness, where? In himself. In himself. It's on the inside. It's in our hearts, brothers and sisters. Are we listening today? You see, that's where all the difference is made. In the heart of man, amen. Hey, we have this witness within us. Why? Because we've accepted God's word. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's move on. He says, in himself, he that believeth not on God hath made him a liar because he hath believed, he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Now, what record did God give of his son? Called the word of God. Means he hadn't believed God's word. Means he hadn't seconded God's word. And because of that, Brother John, they'll split hell wide open because they don't believe God's word. Amen. So they have it within the heart. As in other words, on the inside. Inside, that's important. Pay close attention. Read on. Verse 11. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Did y'all get that? Not in your works. Not in your abilities. Not in who your mom and your daddy is. Not in your church membership. Not in anything else other than Jesus Christ and him alone. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can love the Father but by me. He is the only way to heaven. Amen. Only way to heaven. No other name under heaven given amongst men whereby you must be saved. He's the only name. He is the door, the Bible says. Amen. Hey, it's all on Jesus Christ. Read on. Now, he says, he that hath the Son of, uh, hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You either have Jesus or you don't. If you ain't got him, then you're lost today. And if you're lost today, I pray to God that you'll cry out and ask Jesus to come in your heart and save you. Let's read on. Verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may what? No! You know what? I know whom I have believed. I know whom I have believed. It ain't no mystery to me. The fact of the matter is that I have Jesus Christ within my heart. Ain't no mystery to me that Jesus Christ loves me so. Amen. I know whom I have believed. Amen. I know it beyond a shadow of doubt. Let me put it to you this way. I know who my mom and dad is. You say, how in the world do you know? Well, number one, they say I look like my mom and act like my daddy. Amen. There's some things that are, that, sorry, mom. Sorry. Sorry, dad. Just what it is. Amen. My dad used to tell me, he said, boy, I should have picked your head off and threw it to the chickens. Amen. Yeah. 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 You said it, dad. You said it time and time again. Anyhow, the fact of the matter is, I know who my mom and dad is. Amen. Ain't no mystery. Now, did I always honor them? No. Did I always do happy and make them happy and everything by them? No. Did I sometimes mess up? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Did they stay my mom and dad? Sure did. Sure did. You see, because it's through the blood. You know why God's still my heavenly father? Because it's through the blood. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hey, if I had to get a hold of your heart today, it almost caused a badness to shout. Amen. It's through the blood. These things, verse 13, have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. No, you can know it because we believe it. Amen. And it's real to us. Ain't no mystery. Ain't no mystery. So when God says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the wor uh, world, guess what? It's because what's on the inside of me makes all the difference in the world. Now with that in mind, go back with me to the text. And now you're ready for what God has to give to us. Look what he says, verse number one. 
or verse number 35. He says, first and foremost, verse number 35, and the same day when the eve was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Now, I don't care how you slice and dice it. I don't care how you analyze it. What that is, is the word of God. Jesus says, let us pass over to the other side. Amen. You know what that ought to be? That ought to be comforting words to them. That ought to be words for them to depend upon and hang on. Why? Because sooner or later, you're going to have trouble in your life. Unlike some of that crowd out there that tells you once you get saved, everything's going to be hunky-dory, I got news for you. Once you get saved, the devil's going to hate you. He's going to fight you. Fiery darts are going to come down on you. Hey, it's going to be ugly sometimes. But praise God. God said in his word, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's God's word. Depend upon that. Now, not that you won't go through the flames, but God will carry you through the flames and see you on the other side. Remember old brother Peter? Remember old brother Peter when God told him, Peter, Peter, Simon, 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 Simon. The devil desired to have you, to sift you as wheat. You know what he says in the next words right there? But I have prayed for you. What he's saying is, Peter, I've been praying for you a long time on this matter. I know what you're going to go through, but guess what? When you go through it, on the other side, you'll be better for it. And what you do is you strengthen your brethren. What we're going through right now, God could have kept us from it. But on the other side, Brother John's right this morning. By what we're going through, it will make us stronger and better on the other side. And when we get on the other side, we ought to strengthen those we come in contact with. We ought to take and utilize what God's taught us through this time in which we're living in and help them on the other side by what we're going through. Amen. And in the process, we'll be a brighter light for God. That's what we ought to do. But we ought to cling, uh, we ought to, we ought to cling to the Word of God and what God's Word says. We're going to the other side. Remember that. We're going to the other side. Now, why is that important? Look with me. In verse number 26 of our text, and he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. Now, he's talking about the gospel. He's talking about his kingdom. He's talking about these things. You'll see as you, as you get down through here, look what he says. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade and then the ear. After that, the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle because the harvest is come. Now he says, look, what happens is it springs up as a, as a little twig, little, 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 a little weed out there, or a little, little, uh, little, just a little, he says the weed, and then he says then it grows into the stalk there, then, then you get the ear, then you got the corn. Look what he's saying. But then corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he put it in the sickle because the harvest has come. We're leading up to the harvest time, brothers and sisters. We're leading up to the harvest time. Now, why is that important to understand and know? Because it's the signs of the times in which we're living in. Read on. And he said, uh, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them, as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Now, what is he doing? 
He's preaching. He's teaching. He's growing them. He's sharing with them things that must come to pass. Amen. Now, verse 35 again. Look at what he says. He expanded unto his disciples. Verse 35. And the same day when the eve was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Listen, believers, there's an opportunity we have right now. That is, we can encourage those that are around us by the word of God. Amen. Amen. What God's given is his word. He's told us what's going to come to pass. He told us how things are going to be. Now he says, look, get in the boat. Because we're going to pass over to the other side. We're going to pass over to the other side. Luke chapter 5 Verse 3, look at it with me. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed he, uh, him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your net for a draught. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have told all night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when he and when they uh, had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. I'm not going to take the time this morning. I don't want to long, be long on this part this morning. But I want you to understand: He did it at God's word. When we listen to the word of God, we will get more than we can even imagine. When we listen to the word of God, it will provide us more than your expectations. Amen. Hey, at the word of God, who should we listen to? Should we listen to the mainstream media? Not me. Should we listen to uh, all these people that are trying to guess and estimate and question this and question that? Not me. I tell you who I'm going to listen to. I'm going to listen to the one that knows all things. I'm going to go to the word of God and find out what God's word says and find out what God wants, and that's what I'm going to do. You know why? Because it's the only sure thing. You know what man will do? Man will lie to you. Man will lie to you. You know what God will do? Never lie. Never lie. So who are you going to believe? Who are you going to trust? I will trust the word of God. Peter says, look, we've told all night. But at thy word, at thy word, we'll let our nets down. And when he did... I'm going to tell you, Brother John, there was more fishes in those nets. They had to call other ships. Hey, come on, buddy. Hey, hey, come on. What's, what's Peter hollering at? I don't know. Let's go see. Come on. Come on. They had more fish. What? And they sent, their ships began to sink, the Bible says. Why? Because they listened to the word of God. When we start listening to God's word, we start getting different results. Amen. We start getting the real results that we need. At thy word. Now, with that in mind. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, and is appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. I hear people tell me all the time, well, you know, that preaching stuff's outdated. Not with God it ain't. Not with God it ain't. Guess what? I'm going to keep preaching. I'm going to keep preaching until God comes back. You know why? Because that's what he told me. Preach the word. Be instant. Means stay at it, amen? Be instant, in season, out of season. He says, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Hey, that long suffering stuff comes right back into play again. I'm supposed to do it with all long suffering and doctrine. Look what he says. I need to be teaching people. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to educate. I'm here to preach the word of God. I'm here to share what God's word says. Why? For the time will come. You know, there's a lot of people don't want to hear this. A lot of people don't want anything to do with this. But this is the one thing that we all need. This is the one thing that will heal our land. This is the one thing that this whole world needs to listen to. For the time will come when they would not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. That's people that go out and say, hey, what do, you, what, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to preach? What do you say I ought to say? Well, I got news for you. I'll never ask one person what I ought to preach. I've never listened to one person about what I should preach. But I'll ask God every time before I ever deliver a message. You know why? Because it's his word, not mine. And if I listen to God, I'll get the right message out there. You see, it matters what God's word says. 
Read on. Because the time's going to come. When they're going to eat themselves, teach you seven inching years. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. They shall turn unto fables. They like little sermons. You know, these little ideas. Let me give you a story about this little old lady lived in her on the street corner. And that little old lady, the guy passed her street every day and everything. Well, one day she started growing these flowers. And then when she grows the flowers, and it sounds like a good story, doesn't it? Sounds like a real good story. Has that time with the Word of God? Has that time with the Word of God? Has that time with Scripture? Do you realize I've already given you a lot of Scripture this morning? Amen. You know why? Because God's Word is what makes the difference. God's Word is what's going to change our lives. God's Word is where the power is. Not change God. God's Word. So in that, read on. You'll be turned unto fables. Turn unto fables, he says. But watch thou in all things. Endure. Oh, no, God, please, no, no. Did y'all see that? Endure affliction. Do you realize being a Christian sometimes is not an easy thing? Amen. Amen. Being a Christian sometimes is not an easy thing. Endure affliction, he says. Do the work of an evangelist, means try to win people, and make full proof of thy ministry. As in other words, utilize what I've called you to do. That's what I'm here doing today. Making full proof of my ministry. Why? Because I'm trying to reach the whosoever's. I'm trying to reach those that are lost. I'm trying to reach those that have wandered. I'm trying to reach those that need to be educated. I'm trying to reach those that God cares for. Amen. Hey, I'm trying to reach the world, praise God. And in the process, we're to do what God's word says. Verse Number 22, or excuse me, chapter 22 of the book of Revelation, verse 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come. Come. God wants man to come to him. Come. He goes on and says it again. Let him that heareth say, come. God wants man to come. Read on. And let him that is a thirst, come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Are we talking about physical water? No. We're talking about the word of God. God wants you to come, get in the word, and let God's word reach your heart. Romans 10, verse 13. Look at it with me. Romans 10, verse 13. For whosoever, I'm glad I'm a whosoever. I'm glad it's talking to me. I'm glad I got that opportunity 36 years ago to accept Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, I'm glad I believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Look what he says. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. When you call, God delivers. Amen. When you put your faith and trust in the Lord, God delivers. Hey, when you accept God's word, it changes you. And never again are you the same. Amen. Read on. When, how then, shall they call on him, and whom they not believe? And how shall they believe in him, and whom they not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Well, let's back that thing up. As in other words, I'm here. So they can hear that they may believe. I'm here. So they can hear that they may believe. Verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? God called me out many, many years ago. 27 years ago. I'm nearly, matter of fact, it's getting nearly 30 years ago now. That God called me out to be a preacher. Amen. Nearly 30 years ago, God called me out to be a preacher. Now, I had always done right. I had always did, did the things I should have done. But thank God he worked me through it. And now he has me right where he wants me. Amen. Because in the process of this... Many, many souls. Thank God. People need to hear the gospel. Read on. Verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why God's word needs to be preached. And that's why mankind needs to hear it. Because it changes lives. It changes lives. How many of us can testify that they heard a message? It stirred their hearts. They went to their knees and cried out to God and said, God, have mercy on me. Come to my heart and save me. And it changes lives. What? When you heard the word of God. 
so important. Go back with me to verse number 35 again. This is the important part. Look what he says. In the same day, when the eve was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Some of you at home have a red letter edition Bible. I imagine those words right there are red letters. Amen. Here's the deal. What God's saying is, hey, get in the boat. Get in the boat. If we'll accept Jesus Christ, he'll change our lives. And guess what? We're going to the other side. Did not Jesus said, I'll never, I'll never leave thee or nor, nor forsake thee? We're going to the other side. It's about trusting his word. Putting our faith and trust in him. And when we trust him, he changes us. Look back with me. Verse 36. The Bible says in verse number 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was. I'm going to hope I'm going to hone in on it this morning. You know what? You're going to have to take Jesus as he is. Amen. I know a lot of times we say, oh, we want Jesus to take us as we are. Well, here's the deal. You got to take Jesus as he is. Amen. You say, how is he? He's the lamb that has been slain. He is the sacrifice for mankind. He is the one that went to the pits of hell for you. But he's God in the flesh. I tell you how you're going to have to take him. You're going to have to take him exactly at who he is. Let me give you some scripture to think on. In Matthew chapter 16, verse number 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea and Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, am, I the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of people that they say Jesus is this, and they say Jesus is that. Oh, he's just another one of the prophets. I got news for you. No, no, sir. He's not just one of the prophets. No, sir. No, he's not one of them. No, that's not who he is. Verse 15. Look at it with me. He saith unto them, but who say ye that I am? Who do you say Jesus is? Who is Jesus? Who is he? Verse 16. Simon Peter, he answers. Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of of the living God. Y'all get that? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Do you not identify Jesus being the right? I'm going to tell you, it makes all the difference in the world. Who is he to you? He's Jesus, the Son of the living God. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Had it God revealed it unto Peter? Through the word of God. Through the word of God. Look what I look, John chapter 6, verse number 57. Go there with me. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Now, does Jesus want people to run around like cannibals and eat, eat, and eat him? No, that's not what he's talking about. The Bible says in the Old Testament over there in the book of Psalms, it says, Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Try Jesus on. Find out what Jesus is all about. I'm going to tell you. You won't find a better friend. You won't find a better lover. You won't find a better God. You won't find a better a, a, a better, a better Savior. Amen. Hey, Jesus. The only way. The only truth. The only life. Amen. Jesus. He's the only one. Now, with that in mind, look with me. He says, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. And he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Now what bread are we talking about? Let me enlighten y'all. He's talking about the word of God. There's a uh, pamphlet that's been going around for a long time. A track, if you will, called Daily Bread. You see what they're talking about? Daily, you ought to be reading the Word of God. And if you inhale the Word of God daily into your life, you'll be surprised how your life will change. Amen. Get a hold of the Word of God. Let God's Word get a hold of you. It will change you. Amen. That's what Jesus is talking about. The Word of God. The bread of life, which came down from heaven. In John 1, verse number 1, in the beginning was the Word. 
And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. What are we talking about? The Word of God. If we will feast on God's Word, it will change our lives. Read on. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? You know what? They weren't willing to accept it. They weren't willing to accept it. They heard it, but didn't accept it. It's just too hard for us. Too hard for us. You know, there's a lot of people out there, they haven't accepted God's word. They hadn't, accept, they hadn't accepted it. The Bible says, as many as received him, to, the, to them gave me power to become the sons of God. As in other words, in order for you to be saved, you must accept what God's word says. Amen. Don't twist it. Don't try to make it fit your little theology. Take it at what God says. Read on. And when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? Some people get offended by the word of God. What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascending up where he was before? As in other words, if you see the Son of Man going back up, will that make you believe? Will that cause you to be a believer? Read on. It is the spirit that quickeneth. That means make alive. It's the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The day I got saved, the Holy Spirit of God came within me, quickened my heart, my soul. Amen. Made me alive. And from that point in time, I've been one of God's ever since. Read on. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. I know there are sometimes people that come to the church house. Not everybody that comes are believers. Some don't believe. Some don't accept. I'm going to tell you, that's only to their own detriment. Because if you'll believe and accept God's word, it will change your life. Read on. Verse 65. He said, therefore, said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Here we are again, Brother John, that giving from God. As in other words, it has to come through the word of God for mankind to get saved. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Read on. Verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. You know, some people are going to fall to the wayside during these difficult days in which we're living in. Some people are going to quit on God. Amen. It didn't work out like they thought. It didn't work out like somebody had been telling them, and they're going to fall to the wayside because they listened to the wrong people. God said these times were coming. God said these times were coming. This isn't a time to fall away from the things of God. This is the time to hang on to what God's Word says. Amen. Look what He says. Many... Other disciples, no more walk with him. Verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Here's old brother Peter again. Listen to what he says. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You're the only way. You're the only truth. You're the only one that can get us to God. Where else could we go? Verse 69, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the son of the living God. Here we go again. Peter's acknowledging who he is. He's the Christ, the son of the living God. Now with that in mind, now they're in the boat. They listen to the word of God. He's the only one. They took him as he was. Amen. They took him as he was. Look with me. Verse 35 and 36. And the same day when the eve was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Now, they're in the boat. We're going over the other side. Got the picture. Verse 37, look at it with me. Here we are. And there arose a great storm. Of wind. And there arose a great storm 
of wind. I've laid in my bed at night and I listen to that wind blow and my roof making a lot of racket up there. Yes, I live in a trailer. Y'all don't like it, you're going to get over it. Amen. I live in a trailer. Praise God. Matter of fact, when I moved here for five months, I lived in a camper. Amen. Just, just embrace that, enjoy it, thank God for it. I do. Now, here's the deal. I was laying in there the other night, and I heard that storm come over, and my, my roof was making that little racket and everything. Oh, how the house shook, you know? It's just really amazing. You're laying there, and you're hearing all that. He said, boy, preacher, you must have been afraid. We're going to the other side. I didn't got God's word on it. I'm in the boat. I'm in the boat. I've come to find out in that, that in this life, man is few days and full of troubles. You go have problems. Hardships and heartaches go with life. I'm in the boat. Great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Sometimes it's going to seem as if you don't have enough strength to go forward. Sometimes it's going to seem as if it's all coming crashing down. Bible says, Job, chapter number 14, verse number 1, Man that is born of a woman is few days and full of trouble. You've got troubles in this life. You've got problems. I know you heard that crowd out there that says that prosperity gospel, that once you get saved, everything's going to be hunky-dory. I got news for you. They're lying. Once you get saved, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have trials. You're going to have hardships. And in the process, God said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. What God's saying here is, you're going to have trouble, but I'm going to see you through. Why? I gave you my word. We're going to the other side. We've already got it secured. We've already got it sealed up. God's got it all worked out. When they got in the boat in, 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 in the book of Genesis, Brother John, when they got there, Noah took God at his word. He built that boat. They got in the boat. Guess what? Him and his family believed God. They were saved because they believed God. And you and I need to trust God just like Noah. You and I need to trust God just like Daniel. You and I need to trust God just like David. You and I need to trust God just like all those that came before us. Why? Because when you get in the boat with God, He will see you through to the other side. Stop worrying about what's going on. Stop looking to man. Start looking back to God. Go with me. Job, chapter number 1, verse number 11. But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Many have heard this story, many know this story. This is about Job and how Job lost it all. Job lost it all. But there's one thing Job never did lose. He never did lose God. All his possessions, even his family. By the way, he didn't lose his wife either. Amen. You say, oh, she's a bad woman. I'm here to tell you. Sometimes we all have weak moments in our lives. Don't start being critical on her. Guess what? In the end of the story, you'll find out that Job and Job's wife got blessed again by the hand of God. So don't get down on Job's wife. We all have weak moments. Remember that. We all have weak moments. Some of us going through this time frame, and what, excuse me, which we're living in right now, don't get down on our brothers and sisters. We all have weak moments. Amen. It's the time for us to love one another. Job is losing it all. Verse number 13. There was a day when the sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Huh, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. We're not fine. Oh, Matthew chapter 24. Let's read on. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the, and, and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servant, uh, have slain the servant which, with the edge of the sword. And I only escaped alone to tell of him. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, the fire, the fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. 
And I only es es escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, I, I would imagine that it got to the point where Job waited to see anybody else come in. Amen. He said, verse number 17, while he was yet speaking, there came also another. And he said, the Chaldeans made uh, uh, three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. Yea, and have slain the, ser the, the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone, uh, 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 alone have it to uh, I escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind and from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and, and, and they're dead. And I am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and ran his mouth. And he shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. Are we listening? I know some of you are sitting out there at home, have lost quite a bit during this time. A friend of mine, I saw her post the other day on Facebook about what her retirement, what she's lost in her retirement. I'm here to tell you, if you've got a retirement, you ought to thank God for it. There's some people, they don't have food on the table right now. Are we listening? Are we listening? There's some people that are really struggling right now. There's some people who have lost loved ones in this process. Are we listening? Are we really weighing out the circumstance and the situation? Are we listening? I tell you what's the worst. The worst is, Brother John, those that have died and went to hell. Those we've lost and we'll never get them back. Amen. Brothers and sisters, while we have an opportunity, we ought to be sharing the gospel with the lost and dying world. You know why? Because, Brother John, I want them in the boat. I want them to be with me so that we can all go to the other side. If you're sitting out there and listening today, trouble's going to come. Man that's born a woman is few days and full of troubles. That applies to all mankind. If you're living out there today, you're going to have trouble. I'd much rather have those troubles with God on my side than not to have God at all. Right now is a wonderful time for us to share Jesus with the lost and dying world. Remember his words, we're going to the other side. What we ought to be asking our friends to do is get in the boat. Matter of fact, some of you sitting out there, you need to ask yourself this question. Are you in the boat? The only way you're going to survive is to be with Jesus and have him in your hearts. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Are we listening? Are we paying attention? You see, time is ticking. Our days are numbered. We don't have a whole lot longer. I hear people say, well, you don't know this. You don't know that. I got news for you. All you got is today. Don't think and bank on tomorrow. All you got is the here and now. Tomorrow for some people will never come. Tomorrow. For some will never come. Right now is all you got. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to ask you very straightforward today. How many of you would be honest and tell me, say, Preacher, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know heaven's my home. Can you say that today? Isn't that good to know? Beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know Jesus Christ, He's my Lord and Savior. Isn't that good to know? Now, how many of you be honest and say, Preacher, I've never accepted Him? I don't have Jesus in my heart then let me invite you to bow your head and cry unto Jesus and say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to die and go to hell. But I accept what you did on the cross for my sin. Get in the word of God and find out the truth. See, I can't do it for you. It's not my prayer. You have to make it your prayer. I can't say it for you. You have to say it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't accept Jesus. I can't put your trust in. You have to. But if you'll trust Jesus, 
you'll save you. You see, in order for these guys to be saved and make it to the other side, they had to accept his word. They had to accept his word. And in order for you and I to be saved and to make it to the other side, we have to accept his word. The question is, will you? Dear Lord, I pray that you'll speak to the hearts here today. I pray that you'll help each and every one, whether listening at home or here in the house. Lord, please, for those that don't know you, I pray that they'll cry out and accept you before it's everlasting too late. Thy will be done, thy word's been preached, and thy way followed. Help us, dear Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we will take and see a revival spring up amongst us and spread it throughout our land. Thank you, dear Lord, for this time and this opportunity. In Christ's name, amen. All stand. Amen. One page, Brother John. Page 278. 278. If God's in your heart, you come. You come on right now. And let God work on the hearts. Amen. Jesus is come on. Come on. You come on. Calling come on. Today. Calling today. Why from the sunshine. Amen. pray that God will have us all back together next week, but we'll see. It's all in the hands of God anyhow. Amen. And so like Brother John says, look at the good that has come from this, how families have been able to be back together and how uh, uh, you've been able to fellowship maybe some with your neighbors that maybe, uh, maybe you didn't know. Amen. But thank God for that. But I do pray that, uh, and by the way, some have sought out God in the process of this. Amen. And that's a good thing also. So let's keep praying one for another. Pray for those that are sick. And uh, also that are going through difficult times and, and all. And then let's also pray for those that, look, this, this is affecting people other ways too. And we need to pray for them that way also, amen. There's some that are living in some depression and, and hardship and heartaches. There's even some that are going without food. And we need to pray for that. If, if we know of any situation like that, we need to try to help them, amen. And, uh, and try, to, try to help as many people. Because uh, I, I don't want to see anybody go hungry, amen. So uh, let's do our part. And let's uh, seek God in these days in which we're living in. And thank God for the opportunity. All right, let's go, Lord, in prayer. Brother John, dismiss us in prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we come before your throne, Lord, begging your forgiveness for where we fail you, Father. Lord, again, we just ask you to be with our brethren, Lord, that are without, Lord. Put a burden upon our heart, Lord, to help them. Father, be with the ones that are sick, the ones that have lost loved ones, Father. And those that are sick, Lord, and can't be with their family, Father, we just ask that you would put a blessing upon them that they just can't understand, Father. Heal them, Father. Protect them. Go with us to our homes, Father. Be with us throughout the week. Be with our leaders, Father. Be with our church family. Be with everyone, Lord, that don't know you, Lord, that maybe they'll come to know you as their Lord and Savior this week, Father. These things I ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.